Hello, everybody, and welcome to the TeacherCast Educational Broadcasting Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for joining us today and making TeacherCast your home for professional development. Tonight, we're going to be talking all about some of the amazing things that teachers are focusing on in 2018. I have two amazing guests from the Edmentum Company. I want to bring on Jamie Candy. Jamie, how are you today? I am doing well today. Thanks for having us. We're really excited to talk to you and all of your listeners. Thanks again for having us on. Well, thank you so much for being here. You are, of course, the CEO and president of Edmentum. Talk to us a little bit about Edmentum and, and what are you guys doing this year and are excited about? Great. Thank you. Well, so Edmentum, um, we are, uh, what most people don't know is we're actually formerly Plato Learning and we are the oldest education technology company in the country. We were a research project that was formed between Control Data and the University of Illinois about 60 plus years ago. And the work that we do uh, is we really focus on the intersection of technology and great teaching. We work with educators across the country and abroad to bring uh, education technology tools into the classroom. And so we focus on digital curriculum that supports standards-based instruction uh, in every state that we serve. And we also focus on formative instruction and assessment tools. One of our product lines that many teachers know is Study Island. Uh, it's used in most schools across the country for formative assessment and inst instruction. And we also provide quite a bit of education consulting. So our, our work really focuses on access, equity, and how do we properly prepare teachers to use the tools that we provide programmatically in the classroom. So our view uh, and has always been our view for 60 plus years, is that technology is here to really supplement great teaching in the classroom. And that is the work that we do. And we provide tools that help teachers really focus on personalizing that instruction for every student that they serve. And I, I certainly agree with that. And I'm looking forward to the conversation of how, you know, the technology is just a tool in the classroom. Right. It's really about what the teachers are doing. To help us with this conversation, I want to bring on Tony Scoggi, the Services Program Manager at Edmentum. Uh, Tony, welcome yeah. to the show. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is great. Really excited to talk about uh, education, all things we can do to help. Well, it, you know, as we know, it is 2018. We, we've just passed the calendar year here. There's so much stuff going forward. This is the time where teachers are looking forward to professional learning, professional development. We've got upcoming conferences, things to do in the classroom are coming at us from all over the place. As a K-12 technology coach, I have the awesome ability to find, feed, and, 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 and bring to my teachers these great technologies. But as Jamie said, it's not the technologies, it's not the tools, it's about the students. Talk Absolutely. to us a little bit about the, you know, what does a 2018 curriculum consist of? It's a great question. Um, a, a lot, I can tell you that in a short word, uh, that there is really a lot that educators in the 2018 classroom have to work on and, and really focus on each and every day. So if you think about an educator, what they start out with every morning is looking at the 35 plus students that they're working with every single morning and try to figure out how am I going to differentiate the content that I give each and every one of these students for the next eight hours in my classroom to meet their social, emotional needs, to not with the fact that of trying to do that day in and day out and help those students realize, right, the success that they're looking to have, um, that, that's really the luxury that we have. We get to go and help them. And, uh, and Jamie mentioned that intersection, right, between really technology and helping folks understand what we can do to really affect student outcomes in the best positive way. Um, we feel like taking technology and bringing that into the classroom in a meaningful way and, and couple that with consulting that, that doesn't just go through and, and tell you what your data looks like, right? Or just say, hey, here, here's a good way to point and click and understand how to do some things in your classroom. We want to have meaningful experiences that help educators really realize the potential that they have to make the best positive impact in their classroom using technology. So th there's a lot, Jeffrey, and I have. We're scratching the surface, but there's a lot that really goes into being a professional educator now, and um, it's a day-in and day-out grind in some cases for folks. Well, I'm, I'm glad you said that word professional, and, and those who are listening at home, we did have a, a little audio uh, lapse in there just a little bit. But Jamie, let me ask you this, because um, Tony mentioned the word differentiated, and I think that's a buzzword that is important in our classrooms, but I think it's a buzzword that if you ask five different people, you'd get eight different answers. 
Yep. When we're looking at the terms of differentiated and blended, are those the same term or are they different? And if so, how? So I, I do agree with you. I think people use those interchangeably. We, I actually define blended learning programs and differentiated instruction or personalized learning as two different things. So um, they can be used. So blended learning can be used to differentiate instruction. But I, I'll tell you how we define it at Admentum. Uh, and I think it's the way that most of our educators that we just serve define it as well because of the programs that we're implementing. So blended learning is taking the best of brick and mortar in classroom instruction, and it's quote unquote blending it with the use of online learning, digital technology, so that students can learn in places outside of the school walls, out of that brick and mortar school. And so there's the opportunity to provide learning wherever that student is. And so you'll see great teachers do blended learning all the time by teaching students and then providing opportunities for them to do work using technology and then coming back together as a classroom to talk about that work, to do coaching and, and, and use that blended learning model to, to provide learning anytime, learning and teaching anytime, anywhere. That's our definition of blended learning. Differentiated instruction is different. It is, you've got 35 kids sitting in your public classroom, whatever classroom, and every one of those students is learning at a different level. And every one of those students needs you in a little bit different way. And as a teacher who has an incredibly difficult job, you are probably teaching 150 plus students, depending on what grade level you're teaching. If you're secondary, you're teaching that many. And so how do you provide a great learning experience for each one of those students? And differentiated instruction is having the ability, whether it's technology or other tools, to find ways to engage those learners where they're at and bring them along their learning journey. And so that's the way that we define differentiated instruction. For us, we have tools that help teachers teach, measure then what they've taught, and determine if there are other ways to engage that learner. And we know that all learners are either kinesthetic, auditory, or visual learners. And so really differentiating instruction is providing instruction in the ways that those learners learn best, which isn't going to be the same across 35 students in your class. I, I totally agree. You know, it's a matter of taking all of those students, making sure that you can educate them individually to their needs, the best of your ability. When we're looking at all the things that are happening with ed tech and helping out in the classrooms, I think over the last couple years, the term student voice has been very, very important and something that's been growing. One of the things that I know is happening over the last year and will be continuing is the concept of teacher voice. Teachers yes. having a say not only with what's going on in their classroom, but clearly the rise of social media has made it easier for me, the teacher, to connect with you, the software developer, and say, here's what I need, here's what my kids are. Talk to us a little bit about how Edmentum and other companies are or could be working with teachers to help make sure that really the student's voice is being heard as your developers are programming those tools. Yes. So this is an area, um, and Tony, feel free to jump in after I talk through this, but we are super passionate about this. So we call it educator first. What it means is every design idea, every service we provide, every product feature, every implementation model, our educators have to give us feedback on it before we put it out into classrooms. And if an educator in that state has not provided feedback, whether it's standards, how we've designed our curriculum, to how we want to do the implementations in their district, if we have not gotten educator feedback, it is an inappropriate use of our customers' time, and we certainly will not support that as an organization. And here's why. I, don't, I do not fundamentally believe in using educators to market products. This is about teachers. Great teachers know how to teach. Our tools are just to help them be better and, and to do that differentiated instruction that we talked about. We are not here as an education company to ever replace the teacher. It is the most important asset in any classroom. What we are here to do is to make sure that we give them the tools so that every student sitting in front of them feels empowered to learn the way they need to learn. Technology will be one of those tools as well many other things. And I think as you look at the way that we talk about our work, we talk about our company being more about services than software or technology because we're here to be a partner in this work and we're here to support the teacher along their journey and to make them more powerful using our tools and many other tools. And I do think, and your other question was, are other ed education companies following this path? And I think, yes, I think a lot of good ones are. 
And I think we absolutely have to. There were a number of years, I just spoke about this last fall on a panel, there were a number of years where education technology was kind of introduced and there was this perception that it was there to replace the teacher, like somehow 20 years from now, robots would be teaching kids. That is an absolute fallacy. We would never support that, at least in our company. And I want to make sure as we talk about our products, our programs, our services, that it is in partnership with educators and never in conflict. Honey, I mean, do you have anything to add to that? I mean, that's that's what gets me up and excited about going to work every day. That that statement right there that Jamie just walked through of educator first, because it is not just something that we you say and you hope that you can deliver and execute against. We have the privilege, and, and I stress that we're privileged to get to go out to work with thousands of schools that this organization I didn't get excited about this is because we actually take what educators are saying and wanting and needing, and we put that into platforms that serve the best possible student outcomes that we can help them get to. So when you get to go into a classroom and watch a teacher say, I used to spend six hours, right, in a PLC or creating a, a PLP professional learning plan with my colleagues, but now I got that down to two and I can reallocate that time to making some really cool project-based learning activities. Or we're gonna go out and do a service project as a class now, where last year we were focused on trying to find ways to take that content uh, and, and create small groups like that, that educator first mentality, and then being able to see it in action that is what gets you excited and passionate about what you do. So I think you are seeing more of it. Um, I think you should see more of it. And if I, you know, and educators are starting to expect it. They're starting to expect tools that reflect their needs, their wants, because they serve a, a dynamic student population and those students have different needs and wants. So that, that. And, and I got to say, it, it's so nice as a, as a technology integration person to to hear those words coming out that you know, especially as a tech coach, most people look at us as he's here to replace my paper. He's here to replace my worksheets. He wants me to do things different. I want to back up to something that you said. This is kind of off the topic that we were discussing, but it's so important that I want that I'm going to ask you to repeat that again. I believe your quote was something to we do not ever want to see teachers as pushers of our products or whatever that term was. Yeah. Why? Because I got to tell you, in a few weeks here, I'm going to be doing a presentation basically in rebuttal to that New York Times article that we all know yep. of. Should yep. teachers be an ambassador? And, you know, if I'm a teacher and I'm using a product from Edmentum, I'm a commercial for you, but I shouldn't yep. be. I should be a commercial for students, not right. for the topic. So let me ask you a double question. What is the difference between working with teachers as partners versus as product pushers. Yep. And why can't all ed tech companies do that? Yeah, so what we, if we have, been, and I do believe that we've built ambassadors and evangelists to the outcomes of our work, right? So, right? so talking about the outcomes that students are experiencing, the positive outcomes, when working within our programs, that's the right conversation to have. I, I do think you cross a very fine line when you essentially turn teachers into your sales uh, representatives. And that's, I think, an inappropriate way to work with educators. So we want educators out talking about the success within their schools and their districts all the time. And we hope that we're part of that conversation when they're having it. But what I don't want to do is set out to go find, you know, hundreds, thousands of teachers and say, use our product and then blog about it or, you know, get on Facebook and talk about it. And I'll give you X. What what we want is people to fundamentally believe that they are improving academic outcomes for their students when working with us. And if they believe that is happening and we show them the results, we call it evidence-based outcomes. If we show them those results and they feel confident that students are doing better with our products, with our programs, than not, then I think it's great when they're out at seminars or they're at panels or they're talking to other educators to talk about the outcomes but not just to talk about a product for product's sake. We have to talk about how are these, whatever tool you're using, I don't care what it is, how is it? How can you prove that you feel more empowered as a teacher using it and that it's showing better academic outcomes for your students? And if that proof is there, then we should definitely talk about it because that's the whole point to access and equity for every kid in this country should have an opportunity to learn the way that they need to learn with teachers who feel empowered to teach them the way they need to be taught. And if our programs can be part of that, 
great. Let's get out and talk about it. But it shouldn't be a sales, you know, or marketing or incentive based system. I think that's doing an injustice. And it's like anything, if you're marketing something that doesn't really work, uh, I think that's false advertising. And that's doing a disservice to our kids. And that's what we're most passionate about is these are kids on the other end of this in every classroom in this country, there is a child who needs and wants to learn. And that is our responsibility. So I don't, I don't know, Tony, if you have anything else to add to that. In these, in these schools, like we, we, I, I get to go out and work hand in hand with these educators. I want them to be successful. We, we are not, this is not a, a, a one way street here. We, we, we get to sit down and work in, like I said, in, in grade level team meetings at the bottom level to help these folks understand the best possible way. So I have an emotional attachment. We get invested in these things because we want to see success and, and they do too for their students. So um, I, I think that that, that piece alone speaks to, you know, uh, not evangelizing, like Jamie had said, as much as we, we need to see, help those folks see those outcomes uh, in the best possible way. So I'm going to stop here for my listeners, and I'm going to say that I have one canned question that I'm supposed to ask our, our guest today, which is, what makes Edmentum and its products different than others? And I think I'm going to answer that by saying it's the philosophy, because as we're hearing right now, there's not every ed, com- ed tech company has the philosophy of, students. A lot of them, I'm, I'm going to be open about this. It is, I'm going to get a product. I'm going to get some evangelists. I'm going to have them do all my product re- retail, marketing, etc. Uh, what I'm hearing from you guys, and please correct me or, or expand on this, I love the philosophy that you guys are discussing right now. Yeah, thank you. I, you know, we, it is a very heavy responsibility that we have in the work that we do. And if you are in education and you don't feel that responsibility, then shame on you. Uh, there are a lot of other technology companies and other industries that you could go and do and um, don't have the same kind of responsibility. These are students. This is education. These are teachers and they need us. And our our mission at Edmentum is to not stop. We are relentless in pursuing the very best design and development. The only way we will do that effectively is by working closely with educators across the country and making every decision with the student and the educator in mind. And if we, and if, and as CEO of this company, you're hearing it from me first, if we, if there is any decision presented to us and our team does not make the decision in the best interest of the educator and then subsequently the students that they serve, then it is a bad and wrong decision and we will change it. That is our focus and that is our mission. We're talking today to uh, Jamie and Tony from Edmentum. And uh, so tell me, Jamie, what makes Edmentum and its products different than others? <laughs> yeah, well, so we just talked about the one, which is I, I really do think that, you know, the large majority of the the organization, we've got uh, over 700 employees and the vast majority are former educators and current educators. Uh, we have a number of part-time teachers that work for us. I think what makes us different is that we we... We truly, when we say educator first, we truly mean it. We are here to work closely with every district in this country, uh, as well as other education management organizations who are trying to do good work for for students and learners. And we put evidence and we put outcomes at the center of our design. And so what I mean by that is we design with the end in mind. So what, what are we trying to do, you know, with this course or with these changes in state standards from an academic perspective, from an instruction, from a scope and sequence perspective, what is the goal that districts have from a state accountability plan? What are you being held accountable to and how do we help make the work you do in the classroom every day a little bit easier by helping you think through how you're gonna achieve those end outcomes with the way that we design and develop our products and our services. So it's really that end in mind Um, That sets us apart. And I think another really important piece to what sets us apart is we've been doing this for a really, really long time. We understand the challenges that districts face across the country. We know how hard it is, everything from infrastructure to policy to funding to instructional design and methodology to get these programs into classrooms. We take that, that responsibility very seriously. We have seen so many good and not good implementation models, and we're here to help and partner and advise and consult. And I think that does make us different from a lot of other companies, because if you look at the growth in education technology, the vast majority of investments have only happened in the last five years. 
So you're talking about a lot of companies that have interesting ideas, but a very limited experience uh, in terms of what's actually happening in these classrooms and what teachers really need to be effective. And we've got 60 plus years of experience and we think that we have really cornered uh, the industry, so to speak, and what help teachers really need. And we're here to provide that. The website is edmentum.com. And as we look and move into 2018, what excites you the most from either the classroom point of view, the business point of view, the, hey, I can't wait for ISTE when we get a chance to show this. What, 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 yeah. what are we looking forward to this calendar year? Yeah, you know what excites me the most? Uh, and this could be a little bit controversial, but I'll, I'll say it anyway. Um, I, I think it's a good thing that we have what I call decentralized education policy back to local authorities, back to districts, back to states. And the reason that I say that is I spent a lot of time in education. And what students need in, say, one particular state is very different than what students might need in a large urban district in another state. And to think that we can develop uh, accountability and education policy that's a one-size-fits-all is a disservice to our kids across the country. So what I'm really excited about is as you look at each state education agency and the work that they're doing with the local education agencies to really serve kids and help teachers, I think we're seeing a transition back to more local control, which I think is the right thing to do for kids and those communities because we all have a little bit different need. And so companies like Inventum and others who work in all 50 plus states, um, we're here to focus on what those those intimate individual needs are in those states and in those LEAs. And, and we wanna make sure that we get do a good job in, in working with those moving forward. So that's what excites me. Tony, how about you? Yeah, I mean, I would, to that end too, the local control piece is really big in the sense too that it helps it really helps guide and shape, you know, not only the policies you described, but also the way that, you know, educators and school officials look at the best possible way to serve their student population, because what a site in rural North Dakota uh, might need is very different than what they might need in Atlanta. And, and so th that differentiation, in a sense, of how you approach and, and how you, you know, really focus on your students, um, that gets me excited because the way we It's not, it's not, a, you know what, we're going to do the same, for instance, uh, professional development opportunity, the same sense every, every cadence. We, we really focus on differentiating to accommodate specific, specific needs of those uh, students and those teachers. So uh, I'm in the same boat. The idea of customizing professional development opportunities, um, that, that's what gets, I think, you know, me from the service side, really, really excited about what's coming up. I can't say it enough, guys. Check everything out here. Edmentum.com, E-D-M-E-N-T-U-M. It, it's very clear here. Lots of different opportunities for growth here. Um, you know, pre-K to adult, no matter what you're looking at this. Let me ask you a couple of the business questions here, guys. If a teacher wants to look at some of your solutions, is this a are these offerings things that a teacher can sign up for? Or does this a are these more district level, get the principal involved, get the BA involved, and they're gonna do this as a district? Well, we want teachers to be able to uh, look at all of our programs and products. So, so programs like City Island, they can definitely jump on and, and get a quick look. Um, for our courseware, you can certainly ask for a demo. Um, we have our, our curriculum and our measurement tools are very customizable. So we oftentimes, we will, we will show anything that we have to any educator who's interested. Uh, oftentimes, we want to be able to show you all of the different flexibility and customization that we offer. So if you are interested, it's easy for you on our website to request someone to reach out and talk with you. And we will always jump on the phone or on a webinar or video to do that. Uh, and we certainly want educators involved in looking at the programs and giving good feedback to their districts and their, their school principals as, as needed. Excellent. Guys, thank you so much for your thank time you. today. I really appreciate it. Check them out, Edmentum on Twitter, at Edmentum. Uh, let's see, Jamie, Tony, thank you guys so much. Any last words? No, thanks for having us. And, and thank you to all the educators listening to your podcast for everything that you do. We really appreciate it uh, and, and look forward to talking to you again in the future on another podcast. And I hope everybody had a great time this year. Welcome to a brand new school year. There's a lot of great stuff happening here on TeacherCast. Brand new redesign, brand new relaunch coming up in early February. We are looking forward to it. We can't wait to share with you guys all that is happening in 2018 for TeacherCast. On behalf of everybody here in the TeacherCast Educational Broadcasting Network, my name is Jeff Bradbury, reminding you to keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students.